All right, we are going to do three lessons all together in the next, next couple of videos. So we're going to talk about lessons 4.4, 4.5, and 4.6. What happens is the book, what we have here is we have a couple postulates and a couple theorems, a few postulates, three of them, two theorems. And the book does this one in 4.4, and then it does two of them in 4.5, and two of them in 4.6. Instead, I'm going to teach all of these, just kind of tell you what they say in one video. Then I'm going to show you brief examples in a second video, and then we're going to do some complete proofs in a third video. Okay? So here we go. Let's start with what's called the side, side, side congruence postulate. Okay? Each of these S's stands for a side. We're talking about triangles. Right? So side, side, side congruence postulate. Right? We just write it though as S, S, S. Okay? All right, here we go. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle. Then the triangles are congruent. Now, if you think back to what we learned in lesson uh, 4.2, when we talked about congruent figures, we said that all of the corresponding sides and all of the corresponding angles had to be congruent. And I also told you we were going to learn some shortcuts. So these are those shortcuts. So you'll notice that I don't know anything about the angles. Okay? All I know is that you have three sets of congruent sides. Okay? So what happens is it's going to look something like this. Okay, so this is congruent to this, this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. If you get something like this, even though we don't know anything about the angles right now, we know that these triangles are congruent because of the side-side-side congruence postulate. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay, all you need is three sets of sides. Now, you can end up rotating this triangle or flipping it or whatever, and it's still going to end up being congruent. The order you write the letters in is important, but as long as you have one side with one side, two sides, even if that second one is way up here instead, and then three with three, you're good. All right, let's talk about the next one. This one now includes an angle, but you'll notice we only know two sides instead. This is called side angle side, congruence postulate. Side angle side, congruence postulate. And it says if two sides and their included angle. Okay, I'm going to tell you what that term included angle means here in just a second. If two sides and their included angle in one triangle are congruent to two sides and their included angle in a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Okay. If two sides and their included angle in one triangle are congruent to two sides and their included angle in a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. And so let me draw you a picture of this. So here's one side, here's the second side. This one I'm going to flip the triangle. Here's one side, and here's the second side. Now we have to have an angle. So we're talking about the included angle. Included means in between the sides. So it's not going to be out here. Okay, that's not in between these two sides. It's not out here. It's this angle up here. All right. And over here, obviously, we're talking about this one here. It's in between the two sides. Okay, so we don't know anything about this side down here. We don't know anything about these other angles. But if we have this order of side, angle, side, the angle is stuck right between the sides, then we know these triangles are congruent. That's side, angle, side, congruence postulate. Let me show you what side, angle, side does not look like. Okay, side, angle, side does not look like this. Okay, see this little one over here? Okay, this is not side, angle, side. Okay, we would call this side, side, angle. And we're going to talk about side-side angle later on, but this is not side-angle side. 
Okay, uh, let's go to our next one, angle side angle congruence postulate. So kind of just almost backwards of this. I shouldn't say backwards because you might think it's side angle side, but flipped. So everywhere I see an S, instead I have an A, A is an S, and S is an A, okay? So same idea though, if two, but not two sides now, if two angles and their included side. in one triangle are congruent to two angles. Slide that over so you can get all these words in here. If two angles and their included side in one triangle are congruent to two angles and their included side in a second triangle then the triangles are congruent. It's a really bad congruent sign. Let me try that again. Congruent. Okay. All right, so let me show you what this looks like. So we've got two angles. Okay, something like this. So one angle here and one angle here. And okay, now it can be rotated, so I'll kind of draw that for you. So one angle here and one angle here. Okay, but you'll see we've got congruent angles. One set here, one set here. Now, which side do you think is considered the included side? Well, remember, included here means stuck between the sides. So the angle is between the sides. So here the side needs to be between the angles. And then here again, the side needs to be between the angles. Okay, let me show you what angle side angle does not look like. Okay, that is not angle side angle. Okay, we would call this angle, angle, side. We're gonna talk about that next. Okay, but that's not angle, side, angle. Well, let's talk about angle, angle, side. Now, this one's a theorem instead of a postulate. Remember, postulates can't be proven, but we can show that they work over and over and over again, and no one's ever come up with a counterexample for them. Angle, angle, side is a theorem, which means it can actually be proven. Basically, you prove it using angle, side, angle, and the third angle's theorem. That's how you end up proving it. And, but here's what it says, if two angles, okay, you notice once again we got two angles here, if two angles and a non-included side in one triangle are congruent to two angles now this has a very important word in this one I'm going to talk about right now. Two angles and the corresponding non-included side in a second triangle. Then the triangles are congruent. If you haven't figured this out by now, every single one of these is about proving triangles are congruent. Okay, so let's talk about this word corresponding as we draw the picture though. Okay, so here we go, angle, angle, side. This is actually what I just drew on the last one when I told you this, what angle, side, angle did not look like. Okay, so that's angle, angle, side, right there. Angle, angle, and a non-included side. So let me draw another one. Okay, so I've got the same two angles. Now, I have to have the corresponding non-included side. So this non-included side was next to the angle with two marks. So I can't use this one here because it's next to the angle with one mark. That's not corresponding. It's not in the same position. It has to be this one over here. All right, now, let me draw you another picture over here. What if, kind of the same type of thing, I had something like that, but then when I draw this one, the one mark is over here and the two is over here. Okay, it doesn't quite look like two marks. Let me make it look like two marks. There you go. Okay, now this mark on the side is next to the angle that has two marks. So here I can't have the right side because this whole triangle has been flipped. That's what's going on here. So I got to have this one. So you got to pay very close attention to the marks that are on your shape. And a lot of times you're going to need to mark those things up yourself. Okay, so you got to be very careful with the marks you make. So that's angle, angle, side. All right. I told you that this could be proven true by third angle theorem. If two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in the other triangle, then automatically the third angles are congruent. 
So we know that this angle up here is congruent to this angle up here. And then we have angle side angle right here, angle side angle, which is exactly what we used here. So that's how you'd prove that this is a theorem and that it actually works. All right, last one, HL. Well, that's kind of weird. Oh, we've been using A and S all the time. Now all of a sudden we use these different letters, HL. So if, if, can you think of a, an H word that deals with triangles? And it's not height. Right? It's kind of a funny word. Okay, this is hypotenuse leg, hypotenuse leg, hypotenuse leg, okay? So, in a right triangle, you only have a hypotenuse if you have a right triangle. So this theorem only works on right triangles. In a right triangle, if the hypotenuse, remember that's the side across from the right angle, if the hypotenuse and one leg are congruent to the hypotenuse and one leg in a second right triangle, have to have right triangles, then the triangles are congruent. Okay. If you don't have right triangles, this uh, theorem does not work. Okay, so let me draw you this. We've got another right triangle over here. Okay, so hypotenuse across from the right angle. So you would have to have this congruent to that. And then the leg. Now, we, we want a corresponding leg, but technically we don't have to use the word corresponding because we could rotate or flip the right triangle to get it to match up. So as long as one leg is congruent to another leg, hypotenuse to hypotenuse, we're good. Now, this is not side angle side. Remember the angle for side angle side has to be stuck between the sides and it's not, our angle's over here. Why are these angles congruent? You guys remember right angle congruence theorem, okay? This really we would call side side angle. Okay, side side angle, but side side angle does not usually work. So we don't have a side side angle postulate or a side side angle theorem. Okay, those are, I'm going to talk about those two here in a second. There's two that don't work. One of them is side side angle, the other is angle angle angle. Okay, we do not use these. Okay, side side angle does work, but only if the right uh, the angle is a right angle. Okay, there are a couple other minor times where it works, and you, if you take a pre calculus course, you'll talk about that but I'm gonna show you later on in class why this doesn't work, okay? But if the angle is a right angle, then it does work, but we call it HL instead because the sides that we're talking about would be the hypotenuse and the leg. So if you ever put side-side angle on your paper for a reason, it is automatically wrong. Angle-angle-angle does not guarantee congruent triangles. All it guarantees is similar triangles. We could change the lengths of the sides and the angles would still match up. So this is similarity not congruent, so we do not use this one until we get to a chapter on similarity. All right, so that's it for the first video. So you need to know side, side, side. You need to make sure you know it's a postulate. Side, angle, side, also a postulate. Angle, side, angle, also a postulate. Angle, angle, side is a theorem. And hypotenuse leg is a theorem. That's the first video. All right, the next video is just gonna be pictures. We're gonna talk a little bit about how these things work. And the third video, we're gonna do some complete proofs.